are you going to say hello this morning? Hmm? No? Good morning, grumpy boy. Hello, welcome to my new way of life with only two horses. I'm six days in, so Mr. Jones went on Thursday. It's now Wednesday of the next week, and having two horses is such a a dream. Billy can't be ridden at the moment anyway because of his feet which I'll get into. So just riding McAllister and only having two horses to clean up after. Amazing. 10 out of 10. Don't know why I didn't do it sooner. Please don't knock my camera over. It's suffered enough. Billy stayed in last night. McAllister's out. Basically um, you know in one of my last videos when Billy had really bad thrush and I was trying to clear it up Oh my god, there's been a whole situation since then. His foot fell off, basically, and it wasn't because of the thrush. There was an abscess under his foot that I did try and get dug out, and they couldn't find anything, and they didn't want to dig any deeper. Turns out, turns out our boy had just decided to grow a whole new foot, so there was actually a hoof inside a hoof. So we dug through the old sole to find the abscess, couldn't find it because it was in the new sole which was behind so god I thought he was dying a few days ago and he's absolutely fine he's looking really good um he just has um a hole in his foot which I need to keep clean and dry so he can go out as long as he's wearing a nappy on his foot and one of his hoof boots but if there's a sprinkle of rain or if the ground's going to get a little bit soggy he's got to come in it would just be a bloody shame if he got an infection and you know we we're sent back a few steps so everything's going in the right direction it's all good get off the camera goodness sake when i get him in later and i change over his hoof dressing i'll show you i'll show you because it is insane i didn't realize horses could just grow a new foot but here we are, every day is a school day. I think before we go out, we'll have a fly mask on. You're not scared of it, come on. Look, you can have this on and then you can go out. Okay? Ugh. Boy. Boy. Let me move my camera and then you can uh, wait. Oh, look, is it breakfast time? Yes. I do sometimes feed them in the field. Just they um they were here this morning, so you've got to work with what you've got. The big reveal. <laughs> Billy, don't in my hair, I just washed it. Thank you. Oh god, they're disgusting. They're disgusting. It's like my very own catwalk, isn't it? Oh, that's another little update. Basically, we've all been lied to. Stable mats are not are not what they are promised to be. Um, I've taken them out of all of my stables, all both, um, and I just think they're a false economy. I mean, the reason we all got on board with stable mats was because they were sold as this like magical cure all, and um, you save a fortune on bedding because you only need to have a very thin layer of bedding on top of the mats. Or at least that's how I remember it. And, okay, that might be true if you've got a magic horse that doesn't wee ever. Um, or if you've got a tiny little pony or something that is very clean in the stable. But if you've got any normal horse, you've still got to have quite a substantial bed on top. Otherwise, what you'll find is that the, like, grotty, grimy bedding just gets, like, sucked under the mat and you get this like collection of just filth underneath the rubber matting and then you've got to pull all the mats out at least every six months clean underneath them with like jay's fluid or like chemicals and then relay all the mats and start again 
I think what's the point? Why not just have a concrete floor? Yes, it's less comfortable for them to stand on, but if you've got a deep bed, it doesn't really make much difference. Concrete floor, deep bed, and then, you know, every so often you can just fork all the bedding up into a pile, sweep out, clean out the rest of the stable, and then you've got a lovely clean stable, haven't you? So, I think we've all been had. I think it was a scam from the beginning. And I think you can't hustle a hustler. I see through the lies. I see through them. what I thought, get that bum in the field. What are you doing Dylan? Oh. There we are, job done. We're good to go, we're going to work. All I've done is get changed and put some jewellery on and uh, I'll show you my little work day outfit and I want to show you what I've done. Ignore that cloth. I want to show you what I've done in the living room because I've been a busy bee. This is the outfit, just very relaxed. Black linen trousers, black tank top, little uh, sheer shirt moment, white polka dots, white trainers. Can you see? Should do the chicken dance. That's the outfit. Going to work, professional. <gasps> you naughty boy, that's not a dog sofa. Get down. There's your bed. Anyway, I don't know if you remember what this room looked like before because I don't usually film in here apart from to do outfit checks. This, that wall was a disgusting purple colour that I've hated ever since I moved into this house. But I just felt like it was beyond my professional capabilities to paint it. And then I had a tin of magnolia paint and I thought I might as well just cover it up. So I started painting and I used a brush because you get a better finish, allegedly. Um, it turns out you only get a better finish if you know what you're doing in the first place. If you actually look closely, I've done a really bad job. But it looks better than the purple, in my opinion. And my thoughts were the colour of that wall compared with the colour of that wall, and although it's shadowy and lighty, so it does look worse on the camera. It's not that bad in person, but they aren't the same color, they're different shades. So I thought at some point, I'm going to decide on a color for the whole room and paint the whole room. Because I know what I'm like, I know that I've done this, it looks good enough. Like, if you don't know, you don't know that it's not good. I'm, it's probably gonna stay like that for another few years and then I'll get around to it eventually. But I just, I walk into this room now and I think, wow, that looks nice. Rather than before, I always walked in and went, I hate that color. And I just didn't do anything about it. So take that as a sign that if there's something in your life that really just gets on your nerves, 
you can change it. Be the maker of your own Be the maker of your own, um, finish that quote to yourself. Destiny, destiny. What a day, what a day. So just got home from work and <laughs> tell me why, tell me why all the toys in the world that my dog has and he likes to play with my umbrella. Like, thank you Otis. Is this your toy? Oh, he looks like he's in trouble. You're not in the troubles. Come here, baby. Don't act like you haven't been playing with it all day. We all know you have. You poor boy. I said that I would ride with my neighbour, so McAllister's going for a hack in about half an hour's time, which I think leaves me just enough time to have a little snack. Hi, darling. Um, I'll have a snack and then we'll go and get him. We have less than 10 minutes to get McAllister in, tack him up, jump on, and um, meet Isla. Is it going to happen? No. But we'll um, try our best. We will. The dogs are doing God knows what. It's just all a bit chaos. I think I've done it again. I've overcommitted myself and I just can't do it. I'm a working professional and a, I've got too many animals still, but I can't get rid of any more. Like this is it. We've got no time at all. Isn't that perfect? Good boy. You need to go in the stable because you are not trusted in the tack room. You know why, don't you? Starts with riding boots, ends with you chewed them. In, dill, in. Good boy, go on, good boy. Will you be okay in there? Good boys. He absolutely destroyed my like normal riding boots, the ones that I wear at home. So I'm having to use my hunting boots when I'm riding at home. And it's just not ideal. He ate the whole sole. So I don't know if they're beyond repair. I haven't got around to taking them in to be fixed, but I don't know if it'll be worth it. They are, I don't know, when did I get those? Right when I got Billy. So eight years old. And they're not expensive, well, they are expensive because of course it's riding stuff. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, and compared with other riding boots, they're not expensive ones at all. They were like around £100, no more than 150 And that was seven, eight years ago. So cost per wear has been very, very good. Thank you, Treadstep. Not sponsored, not Spawn. I wish. Right, let's go. So we're back. It was a little short but sweet ride and we had some really good cantering and stuff. But it's just so nice. Just riding purely for enjoyment. I mean, next week I'm sure I'll get a bit more on it and I'll probably look at going to some shows and things. But this week I just want to take it easy, have fun and just ride without the pressure of getting him ready for a competition. I do need to go and see what damage the dogs have done. So I left them in the stable and Billy's rug is not on the door anymore. Otis, have you chewed that rug? I think he has, has he? Naughty boys. Not you, you're a good boy. This one's done and dusted. 
We'll put him out in the field tonight. Now I'll get Billy in, although he's kind of halfway there. I'll show you what I've been doing with Billy's feet, because it's quite interesting. Quite interesting. So we've got a lot of um, a lot of medical assistance going on. We're doing three feet for thrush, and that's just normal. Clean the feet out really well. Iodine or some sort of thrush treatment. So this was a tip of Google when I was doing my extensive research for this whole thing, and it said to use a hoof pick, obviously, but also to get yourself a wire cleaning brush. Genius. It gets in all the little nooks and crannies that maybe a hoof brush isn't stiff enough to get into. So that's what I've been doing. Um, I'll show you on this foot. Apologies if you can hear me breathing down the phone. This is um, heavy work. I just clean it out like that and the wire brush. So that's it all cleaned out with the brush and it's really good because obviously with a thrushy hoof you don't want it to get wet so not having to use the hose can only be a good thing in my opinion. And then just use some iodine right down. Oh Billy hang on, I'm trying to do too many things. Just hold that for 30 seconds and then put it down. And then I'll do that same thing again on those two feet. And then I'll show you the exciting whole new foot. Let's get into the big boy. Honestly, prepare yourselves. You've never seen anything like it. I'm sure some of you have actually. Crazy. So this is a whole brand new frog and this is a whole brand new sole. I might try and put a clip on the screen of what it looked like when it was coming off and I was desperately worried. You can see the poor thing, that's where the old abscess was and there's still, it's toughening up now, but there is still some soft tissue right, I don't want to touch it, but right there. Um, so that's what we're waiting to heal. I'll show you what we've been doing. We're not going to use the wire brush just because if I get a bit of the wire in that open bit that's really going to hurt. So we're just going to use the hoof pick to clean down the middle of the frog. Anything in there? And just brush out. And then just the same as we've done with all the other feet, we'll spray the iodine really down in the crack. And also really up in here. Around the sides. iodine gets everywhere and you can see his sole isn't actually attached to this bit of the wall because it's a new one coming through. Ideally we would have trimmed that wall right down but because we want to keep his sole off the floor because it's a new one and it's going to be delicate and it's not quite tough enough for the outside world so by keeping the wall a little bit longer it just means his sole's got a little bit of protection until it's like ready to hit the road literally hit the road running. So, I mean, that is hardening off. I think it's gonna be another week or two of this every day, but I'd rather go through the agony now and get it done properly and not have any more problems, touch wood, um, rather than do half a job and just have the whole thing drag on for months. And like my foot guy said, I could put a set of shoes on him now and he'd be sound and I could start riding him. Um, but I don't think that will do his navicular any good. So I'd rather just get through the next, it's probably gonna be another few weeks until I can actually ride him. But you know, it's not even summer yet. We've got plenty of time. Back on with little booty.
Good night, gorgeous boy. Good night, baby. Good night, gorgeous boy. Stop that, Dylan. Well done. Good self control. Good night, boobies. Right, that's it. Where's your brother? Where have you been? What have you been doing? Hmm? Relaxing days in the countryside. <laughs>